Hello there and welcome to Nexus. This is the Winter Balance Preview Mod version 2, I believe. And we're looking at opportunity cost of the TR clan, playing as the Soviets. His opponent, hailing from Sweden, it is indeed Orange Pest, playing as the new hot Axis faction in town for 1 versus 1. It is indeed OKW. A lot of players, a lot more players are starting to use OKW recently, and uh, Orange Pest has given us some interesting commanders. Basically, we're not seeing special operations. We're seeing Führersturm, Scavenge Doctrine, and uh, Overwatch. Opportunity cost has available to him. Airborne, Urban, and Lend Lease Tactics. So, uh, my camera work won't be the best today because I'm actually holding the microphone in my hand. The reason being is the stand. I've kind of knackered it just before I was due to gas. So uh, hopefully um, I can handle this. I've got a little shortcut that allows me to follow the units with my uh, cursor. So that's always helpful. Stern pioneers go for the south. They always go south. If they see danger, they always dive behind here. It's just it's just obvious. So Orange Pest is very quick to get behind the ambush position. He's just waiting now. Let's have a little momentary look at Tacticular map. See the combat, engi combat engineers have gone north. Um, I'm not going to talk about the changes. You all know them. I probably don't know them as well as some of you. I'm just one of those guys that's going to kind of... I'm playing uh, balanced mod games. I've played a few. And I'm going to be playing in a Patron tournament this Saturday. So wish me luck, will you? I'm going to bloody need it. I've barely played. Um, but yeah, they're still waiting now. Let's have a little look at the Fog of War. Revealed there by this folks grenade here, just south of your picture. And the Stern Pioneers use that as an opportunity to spring their ambush on the other conscripts, but there are more joining the fray. It's a triple conscript build from Opportunity Cost, and Orange Pest has bled heavily there. Retreats with one Stern Pioneer remaining. That was dangerous. Could have been gone a lot worse. This folks grenade is outgunned and outnumbered. A little bit of a late retreat, possibly just trying to distract and buy time. Let's check out that new. Uh, sandbag build time should be a bit slower. I counted it 2 minutes 21 on the top there Yeah, it does happen more slowly. It's hardly the most hyper things But sandbags is if you watch many casts of mine, you will know that I hate Sandbags being on frontline infantry. I think it slows the game down in the long run I think it makes uh, makes maps less important because you can make your own green cover anywhere, etc So yeah what else we got going on? We've got uh, medical supplies up in base, of course, for Orange Pest. He has got a good uh, bulletin, 7% less on the cost there. Medic's even 200. It's great. I, I don't get this change. Why is it 200 manpower? I never had issues as Soviets getting out uh, the field infirmary. It's, just, it's one of those things, I have to say, I'm a big fan of a lot of the community members, such as uh, Mirage of Floor and Jibber Jabba Jabba. These cracking guys put a lot of effort into the community, as do I, you know. I have a mutual respect society kind of thing. But I'm not the biggest fan of some of these changes. I love the quality of life stuff. But my gut instinct says so far is I'm very conflicted on the direction of balance. I, I, I usually make a YouTube video, but I, I haven't quite got the passion right now. I've got a little bit of fatigue after the World Championships, as you can understand. But I'm very excited to be excited about coming here as once more with uh, Master League Tournament 4 Scorched Earth, which, have, as you may know, is a group phase tournament. And then halfway through the tournament, we bust out winter maps and Commander Terminator um, concepts. And it's just going to be awesome. Really looking forward to that. So we've got a four um, folks grenadier build. Very talisman-esque, if you remember that guy. And oorah away from danger. <laughs> we bravely run away, Commissar. <laughs> Indeed. There's your pick. It's urban defense tactics. So clearly worried about mechanized... I mean, the biggest reason to go with urban defense is to get the M42 45 mil, isn't it? So, uh, he's clearly worried about mechanized. We do actually have a flamethrower on this combat engineer and a minesweeper on the northern one. So, uh, smorgasbord of capabilities there. Stern Pioneers have three kills thus far. That's part and parcel of being ubermensch, allegedly. Flame grenade is a good one. 
keeps them at distance. Is he actually sustaining flame damage there? No. Opportunity cost, by the way. I watched him uh, manhandle Elpern repeatedly on stream recently, and Elpern's no slouch, so I think he's an improving player that wants back in on a top level tournament action. A little bit vacant in 2020, but 2021 will be a fresh start for him, so let's see where he goes. Now then, so we're having a, a victory point sandwich in the south. There's the, this isn't a cutoff, so we don't worry about that. Both players have kept their munitions thus far, and uh, I'm interested to see where opportunity cost is used here. So let's be on the mine hunt. Uh, he must have laid something somewhere. I know he's got the flamethrower, so that kind of explains it. But look at the manpower he's floating. He's floating a lot of it. Let's check out. Remember, I'm doing everything one-handed here. Usually, I have my keyboard commands available. So, hmm, not coming for any upgrades either. She's got a lot of manpower. Never float that much manpower. It's never efficient. I mean, he's, is he waiting for shock troops? Is that what he wants? But still, I mean... Think of it this way, If he's probably going to build tier 2 at some point anyway, right? So he could have got an, I don't know, a, a Maxim just to help out. A Maxim could have like just gone here using the conscripts, could have really suppressed some of these e earlier folk grenadier squads, and, uh, and then he still would have had room for his shock troops when they hit. I mean, I'm, I'm not being, obviously I'm not a good player, I always absolutely put the asterisk next to my name, but I'm... I've watched pretty much every single tournament <laughs> ever <laughs> since 2012. I've either watched or cast every single tournament. So I, hopefully my feel for build orders is reasonably worth listening to at least. And I'm definitely not saying Maxims are a go-to unit by any stretch of the imagination. But anything rather than float 800 manpower. That said, he is, uh, he would have been more in the lead. He would have stuck, probably been able to hold this cutoff, but it won't keep ri ripping on the guy. He's got his manpower. There's his shock troops. A little bit late to the battle. Two minutes of pressure not applied, in my opinion. Nice merge, though, making up for stun grenade in. Still suffers the pressure, so he just burns a lot of manpower and trying to keep that flamethrower active. Didn't get his just desserts. Now he's forcing the Stern Pioneer away. And here's the mechanized issue he was worried about. Look at that! I'm not a complete moron, guys. <laughs> Look, he, he is building a Maxim. So, yeah, there you go. M42 as well. So it seems that, yeah, he should have gone Maxim earlier, basically, is, is the takeaway from the early portion of the game. Um, Panzer 2 on its way. Takes a long time to build, so... Yeah, it's going to be here. What do you think of shock troops on this map? I like them. There's this wall and, of course, the southern assembly, as I call it. But you have to play situationally with them. They're a great unit situation. But they do need that manpower, though. And um, they're using a smoke grenade here. Lose a trooper. And are continuing to battle. Most likely because, indeed, there it is. The M42 is set up now. Hopefully you guys can hear me pretty well. Uh, hopefully I'm holding the microphone. My arm was getting tired, I just realised, so maybe I was dropping the microphone a little bit. Down south, we've got uh, Fox Gradius getting burnt away back to base. Maxim, who we won't keep mentioning it, but should have been there three minutes ago. Panzer two reversing that booty into combat. Very lucky there's no mines around here. It could have been. Although the uh, well, the stormtrooper wasn't in position, there could have easily been a mine for Orange Best. He's fortuitous to a degree. Anyway. So M42 and Maxim operating together. I wonder if there's a unit coming. Ah, there's two units coming to flank. He has to be quick on the turn here, the opportunity cost. Gotta be a little bit quick. Folks, good ideas coming in. In an easterly direction. There's the flip from the Maxim. No, he's going to try and get behind green cover. And conscripts are going to come to help out, so it's all for nothing anyway. Meanwhile, Luke's is on the hunt. He smells something. And it's not yesterday's dinner. Good shots on the retreat path. Grenade was tossed, easily dodged by Orange Pest. Orange Pest has gone for Scavenge Doctrine. 
Oh, look at those shots in on the shock troopers. The Lukes could finish the job here. However, the M42's trying to point guard for and trying to defend. Gets another juicy shot and green cover to the rescue. Shock troops survive. Oh, very lucky there. That wall was there. Very lucky indeed. Luke's backs away. Now has three kills. Look at those grenades, though. Filtration nades eat your heart out. Meanwhile, got the uh, MG34 of Orange Best. He's attacked, moved it, has he? He's not set it up anyway. That's a little bit... I am right. Yeah, he hasn't set it up now. So this is a scrim, it's worth noting, of course. It's not a tournament game, so the players, you know, there's levels of coming heroes. Not just to the players, but to the players' um, kind of effort they put in. And I've noticed this. Like, if you watch a cash game, some of them are really good, and some of them are really obvious that the players aren't trying very hard, etc. In this, these guys are both fierce competitors. They have huge egos, and I should know a thing or two about having a huge ego. So, you, you'll expect to see little things like the MG not setting up, like, super sharp. Little things like that. But there should be operating around 80% capacity, something like that. They'll, uh, they want to win. But they're not, um, they're not killing themselves to do so. There's an air of laissez-faire about it. ISG coming in from the eastern side. But what, just to add to that, by the way, what can often happen? As soon as things start to die, that's when they, uh... That's when the bullets start to fly and, you know, they really go for it kind of thing. It's often a bit of a truce towards the start of the game. Maxim. Oh, it's a big ISG round. Shock troops doing damage also. Meanwhile, M42 trying to... Ah, the Lux is just sculling around there. So victory points, let's keep an eye on them. It seems Orange Pest has had the better of it thus far. Luke's is going in though, you need to keep a more of an eye on this. Conscripts do have, there's the Ural, they do have 18 8 of course. You may have seen one already, or at least the threat of one. Here's that second Schwer Panzer Schlepper truck. Oh, M42 goes in. Stun Grenade stops the march of the Conscripts. And we have a cutoff. From the MG34, munitions out of opportunity cost hands. Now he's thinking about munitions lost. ISG watches on as the Fox Grenadiers rush into combat. Fox Grenadiers taking, ah, <laughs> taking the munitions cut off of Orange Pest. Well, there's that ISG, that could have finished him off. In fact, he could still die. No, he's just about going to survive. There's the uh, Veteran C2 Stern Pioneers repairing Lickety Split with those uh, very, very efficient low torches. Trip by fly goes off. Was that the other oh, one flies? Shot troops now, up to six kills. Dodged there the hard way. Mine goes off this time. Fortunately, is in a lot of peril. I tell you, Orange Best just suffered a lot of manpower casualties. And the Lux is hardly making up for it. It's got five kills. I'm really feeling that uh, opportunity cost has just had a bit of a, a good period of pressure applied. You will start to see that take effect on the map. Now, he might try and push off out of this position. Perhaps. Where did he choose? Oh my god, that's, that's, I know, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me here. I know that this is literally about 15 game meters from the base exit, but this is actually, actually by competitive one versus one standards, an aggressive flak half track. Not flak half track. You can tell I haven't cast for a month. The Schwerpanzer headquarters. <laughs> Excuses, eh? This could be a legendary cast that millions of people go on to watch. I need to up my game, basically. Who knows? We do have the M42 hit, Veteran C2. Gaining that better rate of fire. Not that I, I suffered a rate of fire before with Veteran C2, but it's going to have even better. It's going to be like a machine gun now. Conscripts equally Vet 2, both of them there. Better durability, of course. Yes, 
Maxim against the first radius in the north. They've got the wrong side of cover, so they will suffer suppression. And a fatality. There you go. And uh, that, of course, that defensive bonus above their head is due to the, uh, the forward headquarters that's been put down by Opportunity Cost. Instantly targeted by the ISG, doing a lot of damage, has to be said. That'll be gone in no time. So 215 ample, but importantly, 40 fuel. I'm really impressed, by the way, of Opportunity Cost's um, veterancy at this point. But I suppose Orange Pest has got similar veterancy. But, uh, you know, both players have uh, been very killy thus far. For lack of a better one. Let's just confirm that on the stat, shall we? Uh, yeah, reasonably high kill gain for 15 minutes, I suppose. Maybe my point was just shit. You have a Jaeger Light Infantry Squad making its way onto the field. Of course, they can't throw the Infiltration Aid for a very long time. <laughs> Quite yet. 120 seconds upon entering the field. But I'm wondering what upgrades we'll see from them. We have had the SDGs for every single folks Grenadier. I just think it gives Orange Pest a really meaty backbone. Which is... Uh, I think that's very nice to have, isn't it? It just makes everything in your army. You've just got that little bit more lethality. It's a mid-range special. It really does help out. Sniper, they say. It's certainly... Well, they've got G43 rifles. They're not scoped, though, like the actual Wehrmacht sniper. But they do the job. Especially on the move. M42 gets some more good shots in. And another... This... He's got a main gun critical. Needs to get out of there. Try to track him through the fog of war. That's going to be Vet 3, surely. Uh, it is indeed now Vet 3, so better pen as well. Grenade on retreat there, but it was way overcooked. He just threw that in a panic. We all remember that kind of adrenaline boost as a teenager play, uh, enduring PE. Physical education, as they call it in the UK. When you play a sport you're not accustomed to and you just go, Ooh! and throw something wildly. That was a very adolescent, nervous throw. Panzer IV on its way for Orange Pest. ISG's climbed to four kills. It's now using, again, the I explosive barrage on the... Uh... I tell you what, it's still in there, but he could do with possibly repairing it, I'm thinking, if he wants to keep getting good use out of it. There you go. Healing in. From coming here as one, of course, the forward headquarters was available to both um, Axis and Allies, the United States and the Wehrmacht. You could build units from it at a decreased rate. And I found that really interesting. It could, its reinforcement rate was much slower as well. And it was just it was a fair dynamic, basically. It was much better. Much better. A lot of the many things that uh, Camille has wanted better in the sequel. But then there are a lot of things the sequel was better than Camille's one, of course. Namely, not having Panzer release in Brits. That's a very sexy tech for you. I don't have access to the Alt key, so I can't do my pan down as we see the entrance of the tank. But we'll be uh, equal opportunists, sort of fair match to allies and give equal screen time to both medium tanks on the field. Interestingly, we didn't see a T-70 this game. It has been nerfed somewhat. It can only... If oh, the Panzer II is about to die. Panzer IV needs to save its life. T-34 is backing away, but not without a kill to his name. They're going to get the paint out and put a red stripe down the side of that barrel. STG's blaring. Smoke grenade goes in. Shock troops keep position. Meanwhile, in the north, Orange Pest has had to take this victory point because Opportunity Cost has done very well to secure the centre for a long time there and equalise the victory points pretty much. So we could probably start the game from now if we want to know who's going to win. We do have seven man conscripts engaged for extra durability. And lower reinforcement time. Sorry, cost rather. So we have cost, opportunity cost is uh, having a good game. I haven't seen many mines though. He does have mine bulletins. And 
you know, I can't really account for exactly what is. He's thrown a lot of grenades. But uh, I always thought mines win games, to be honest. Obviously, dodge grenades there. Oh, Con does not want these combat needs to die. Panzer Force tracking them. Couldn't get it off, though, and the M42 can penetrate, of course. Oh, I know what opportunity cost is going to be going for. It's uh, very... Basically a refrigerator on tracks. KV-2's building in the Leningrad tank factory. First used against the Finns, of course. And they were really rubbish on the Karelian Ithmus. Trying to get through the forests just to, you know, obliterate some farmers in their uh, foxhole. And uh, taken out on the ice with, uh, I think the Finns had like one or two howitzers and they made like amazing use of them. Vet 3 Maxim, oh, merged in the nick of time by opportunity cost. Panzer 4 backs away as the Maxim survives with that veteran steel, all important veteran steel. By the way, the T-34 now has veteran 1, so does have the ram ability. Ramming maneuver. That's so British, isn't it? It's not very Soviet. Just be round exclamation mark. What you said, chap? Shall we go for a ramming manoeuvre? I do want to make a joke about ramming manoeuvres, but I, uh, yeah, I've got to be civilised these days. <laughs> Combat engineer. This is MG34 laying down the suppression. M42's got the cloak mode, don't forget. And uh, it doesn't stop the suppression of his combat, though. Panzer IV meets the T-34 in combat. M42 is going to have to spin here. Do we have a Rakettenwerfer? Where is he? He's in base right now. He's been forced away very recently. Panzer IV cannot pursue. If he had the Rakettenwerfer, he would have been able to. But these units recently must have pushed him away. Meanwhile, folks Grenadiers have hit Veteran C4. They force away the second M42. Panzer IV goes in and conscripts for an 18A, forcing it away. T-34, 76mm round bounces harmlessly off that frontal armour. And we've got the Veteran C3, M42 down. That's big for opportunity cost. That's going to mean that this Panzer IV's got better ability to fight. And the Rakettenwerf is now set up. T-34 in peril. One big shot goes in. Can he finish the job? Finishes the job on the M42, that's for certain. Second one does, has no veteran seat. Can't penetrate a wet paper towel. That's what she said. As uh, T34 was lucky to survive, to be honest. We're getting could have targeted him again. Uh, oh no, the Panzer IV could have rather. He had the range, the I think. He could have gone forward anyway. But anyway, opportunities lost for opportunity uh, for Orange Pest in this case. I'll keep making that same joke. Let's have a look at some of the kills. 12 kills on the shock troops, probably worth. The Jaegers have yet to make much of a dent, though, so far. They do have a lot of abilities they could start making use of. <laughs> Opportunity cost, of course, is a professional weightlifter. Uh, he's not very good at it. He just doesn't have a job, you see. Got a... You <laughs> Analyze infantry. Analyze infantry, he's trying to say. Uh, okay, so you use the T-34 to analyze your opponents, try and figure out where their positioning is. That's what Orange Pest means by that. Got to analyze. That's certainly what he said. Anyway, conscripts go north. Where's this KB-2 at? Yeah, we've got waiting for manpower, it seems. Sandbags. Uh, the enemy has taken what we have secured. That's always nice to see. I just hate sandbags. I don't know if I've mentioned it already. Mine goes off. Folks, great ideas. Pay the price for capping that point. And here it is. We do have how it's a barrage coming down. Let's keep an eye on that. No, it's been mitigated. But do you know what? It's difficult to mitigate. How it's uh, on tracks. Look at this big bastard. Clement Vera Shilov. Heavy assault tank, howitzer on tracks, and it's ready to attack. Let's see what happens with that fat bastard. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. The fridge on wheels forces that first grenade away with a lot of health damage, but 
<laughs> very, very low model health for every squad. And Orange Pest responds with the rhombus of doom. The Jagdpanzers being crudely drawn by a five-year-old near you in Crayola. This is a tank. It's got no turret, you idiot. Tanks have turrets. Oh, sorry, Daddy. Sorry, my joke meant we missed something die. Um, I'm very good at that. Um, it was something German. That's as much as I've got for you on that one. How it uh, forces away the photo And smoke grenade thrown again. Of course, it's very fond of that. Pepper shards do are able to push in and force away the uh, JLIs as the uh, we do now have a kill on the KV2. And here he is, the little rhombus that could. Very late war Panzer IV variant, of course, with the whole of the Panzer IV. And a little bit of a better cannon, I believe. Might just be the same cannon, actually. I think it was really desperate when you started seeing Yank Panzers. No, it is a longer, it is a longer pattern, just slightly. So a better velocity, basically. Oh, nice penetration there. KV2 needs out of that situation. Options cost, by the way, has had a good uh, spirited push. He's been able to reclaim the central ground a little bit more. ISG, I mean, Orange Best is always using ISGs and pack howitzers. Look, Ma, no hands is the approach. It's a really helpful tool. And one of the best things about it is micro drain on your opponent's brain, and it, it's a no brainer for you. That's why Ed 80 Hertz was able to go toe to toe with Elpen after two minutes. It was the double mortar bar. You know, it's a great equalizer. Coach Schneider is pushing in, just looking to take standard territory points away. It's always good to keep that map pressure up. One of the things that separates the elite from the top levels of play is that constant map pressure. They're just unrelenting map pressure. And it really seems to me that uh, the likes of Orange Pest are starting to uh, add that feather to their cap now, which is nice to see. Ah! You never expect the Yag Panzer! In fact, those that do expect the Yag Panzer still get penetrated by him. He is on uh, many police lists. First one is looking to escape their life. Panzer IV. Now up to 19 kills. Good work by the uh, M42's bigger brother, the 76 mil. I think the KV2 has been underwhelming thus far, we can agree. One kill. This guy is uh, not too well, but I'll tell you who is. Orange Pest. With basically all the points are worth having. Both fuels, all three victory points, not too shabby to say the least. G34 doing a good bit of work there. Conscripts can't get into play. Sandbag surviving, keeping the folks around his life. You don't, don't worry about the unit's health, just look at the sandbag's health. That's what I always do as a caster these days. I don't even think, oh, will the uh, unit survive this KV-2 shot? I just click on the sandbag. It's now, it's second nature. Stem Pioneers, Instagibbed. Orange Pass with a really meaty passage of aggression. I'm really starting to feel like this is going to make Opportunity Goss a little bit more desperate. He's going to try and push it. Oh, there you go. Good penetration on the Jagdpanzer. Damaged engine also from the conscripts. That was foolhardy by Orange Pest. He paid the price, but he was able to get the Howitzer Barrage off. What damage can be done here? KV2's in a world of hurt, as are these, this conscript squad. Can it survive through the whirly dervish of destruction? The Panzer IV pushes in. The KV2 backs into a flagpole. However, the conscripts are there to protect him. Nice shots in. On the KV-2 somehow. Good bit of damage and it was by the Raketenwerfer. What a push in from the north by Orange Pest. But he isn't able to finish the job there. And I have to say, it was a good retreat though. To see that it wasn't working for him and to get the retreat off. A lot of players would have stuck around there to try and get the second shot off. And he didn't do so. Which I think is a mark of maturity, I want to say. So well played to him. 
Folks, Grenadiers in the crater as the ISG continues to the, the assault. Conscript's now going to go for these southern points because opportunity cost needs something. Very. There's a mine for you. Four man, or three man mine rather. One, one from one squad, two from the other. But double uh, vet two combat engineers. Very quickly repairing there. And that is indeed a shot blocker. Opportunity cost learns that the hard way. Destroys the ambush wall. Meaning he has possibly better sight lines of this fuel. Oh, what a shot by the T-34. Can it finish the job? No, he goes into reverse mode. I'm not sure I would have done that. I probably would be dead by now, though. <laughs> anyway, we've got um, shock troops pushing into the centre. Probably. That's I don't think I don't think probably is the word there. Definitely is the correct word. We do have a booby trapped point in the north, and the JLIs are giving a dead giveaway for that. Very nice way to get a squad wide though, if your uh, enemy's fatigued enough. That's really juicy green cover, isn't it? It's a shame Orange Pest hasn't able to salvage that. It's now fallen into his enemy's hands. Got an SU-85 on the way for opportunity cost. What a nice mixture of vehicles that'll be. He's going to have a VET 3 T-34, which is really good. Hyper mobile and just as good as killing infantry as always. And the uh, the KV-2, which has and it's hard to pay for itself. Quite yet. But it's a threat of a KV-2. It's have, like having a nuclear deterrent, isn't it? It may not, you know, you may not be able to use it, but it stops your opponent pushing in where it exists. Think of it that way. What? I was not expecting the KT, but here it comes anyway. As the KV-2 decimates the Raketan Werfer, we have the arrival of Big Neil. That's right, his name's Neil. He's a Königstiger, a King Tiger, a Bengal Tiger, 68 and a half tons of quantified destruction. King Neil's time is now. KV-2, SU-85, and the T-34 await. Big Neil shows no fear. He has his cohort of a Vet 3 Panzer IV. He pushes in, and the Panzer IV disappears. Magic trick. Awesome. Love it. Go on, Big Neil. Get in there, son. 234, KV2, are more than a match that folks are going to be a squad. Well, good work by the JLIs. Now, this is good play as well. You know they were being useless, so bring them into play. <laughs> Something I need to learn as a player. You can tell I've got, I'm have got. i actually going to play some games this side because I'm actually thinking as a player a little bit more in this cast. I'm trying to think, yeah, that's great. I should actually move my units when they're not doing anything. I'm learning. <laughs> anyway, SU-85 forced away. The King Tiger doesn't penetrate the second time around, though. We have the threat of infiltration, Nate. Oh, nice 18 aid off there. That was the bigger picture. Big Tiger is now even slower. Or 18 aids threatening. King Tiger needs to back out of there, but there he is. The Schwer Panzer headquarters to the rescue. Oh, and that cannon does a hell of a lot of damage. Fitzball's going in. He's past the ramming envelope, though. He's looking to fire into the rear instead. And there are easy penetrations in the rear for Orange Pest. Very exposed right now, and he's going around and around. Baby, right now, like a record, baby, your King Tiger's going down, 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 down. As the KV-2 goes in, big shot bounces off the front of the King Tiger, and the T-34 goes down. Where is opportunity cost? Look here. He needs a big shot from the KV-2. Misses with the high explosive AOE. Meanwhile, by the way, up. Orange Pest was able to cap the victory points. King Tiger's still alive somehow. Confused here. Dun, 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 dun. KT God. <laughs> Indeed, Big Neil is invulnerable. You can't, you can't beat him, quite frankly. S he needs veterans here on the SU-85. He needs to. Oh, nice. Deci second decimation of these. Yeah. Not liking this though. He went a little bit too far forward with it and suffered a faust. Fortunately for him, there is no Rakenver for anymore, so he'll be absolutely fine. There's still these double veterans C2 uh, combat engineers, don't forget. 
Men, me oh, oh, it makes me sick. Main good destroy critical. Absolutely hate them. Blight of competitive. ISG, by the way, big shout out. 11 kills, not too bad. Victory point pressure has been fantastic. Jaegers on 11 kills, veterans C2. I tell you what, Orange Pest could make a go in a tournament in 2021, I actually think. He looks like he's beginning to be ready. I watch him on stream, he's a little bit less uh, mental now. He used to just click randomly, and it was infuriating to watch him. He looks a lot more efficient these days. And this game, I would argue, a little bit more maturity with his play, a little bit more considered uh, and constant aggression. It's all about, uh, as Muhammad Ali used to say, drag your... Oh, nice name there. That's what he used to say. He used to say, throw a grenade at your opponents and turn them into small pieces. Easy to break them down, you see. Uh, King Tiger going into the centre. Shock troops back away. He did lose an important battle in the north, though. Conscripts couldn't tango there, but he is capping the centre. King Tiger. On three kills only. SU-85 needs to get to veteran C2. Rapido. Oh, that's a nice shot. But it becomes godly at vet three, of course. Nice battle. I'm liking it. That's uh, oh dear. KB2 gonna let it far forward, unsupported. There's no squad here, here, no support weapons here. Not the best way to use the King Tiger as uh, 4v4 players will tell you. One best to learn or two think, from them. KB2 now getting closer to veteran C3. As the Ziskun's getting a meaty barrage in. Backs away. Both grenadiers on their bellies, pushing forward. He's done his duty in the north. He's put a booby trap down. He's going to come for the center again. And don't forget, opportunity cost only has 13 victory points left. Everything has to. <laughs> again, Burfa, constantly just getting wrecked by the KV2. Love it. Can't oh, finish the job though again. You've got to be joking me. SU85. On. <laughs> As he is on prioritized vehicle mode, making him spin around. And the King Tiger is going to take advantage, is he? No, he's going to hit the random piece of shrubbery. And here we go again with the Howitzer Barrage. SU85 goes forward. Oh, that uh, Maxim's got to die, surely. KV2 could die as well. He's got to be really careful there. How did he dodge that? Hacks. He's got, he's got howitzer do dodging hacks. <laughs> Opportunity cost getting tired. He just ordered unreinforced units onto the field. He's got to try and keep up with Orange Pest and wait for him to get tired. He's got to just hang in there. Keep a hold of these 13 victory points. Get this KV2 constantly just obliterating squads. Keep it around this area, push it forward, obliterate a squad, push it forward, obliterate a squad. Don't do anything else with it. Let the SU-85 keep the King Tiger at bay, and all that. Oh, I don't know. It's been a good game though. It's been a good game so far, I would say. Two very good players. And nearing the top of their power, both of these guys have really good chances in tournaments in 2021, I want to say. To watch top level code 2 again, isn't it? Without it being bloody mechanized versus Ostrup and everything. Oh, taking the northern victory point. Good work by our cost. Keeping all I think he's lost one victory point, hasn't he? Was he on 14, I want to say, for a little that while? Am I dreaming that? And they dropped one somehow. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe fuck you. King Tiger's back in action. He's got a lot of fuel as Mr. Pest, hasn't he? That's the OKW curse, though, isn't it? You're just constantly reinforcing these squads. And the pop cap is so high. I mean, I know he's got he's got room for pop cap. That's not a point right now. But that also does become a dynamic, though. I mean, hopefully for him, he can just keep his forces and wait for the almighty push. I mean, I'm, I, hate, I hate to be... 
I don't know why I'm pretending to give tips in this class because I definitely don't have anything to offer these amazing players. But it's one of those things, isn't it? When you're up against something, they're 13 victory points. You do want to hold back and just go for an almighty push sometimes rather than come in piecemeal, you know, like tower defense style. And hopefully for him, he's doing that now. He's got the Minesweeper up. He's got the Minesweeper in position, but... And he's got a Photos Trinity of flanking, so this could be it, you know, this could be it. He's got a Vet 4 Photos Trinity up there, there's the Maxim. So it doesn't look like it's going to be now. He has lost an MG to this, perhaps, but no, the Photos Trinity here, that came from the northern direction, has got a good angle on these squads, but the KV-2's ready to mitigate. Nice infiltration nades, forcing away the combat engineers. SU-85 gets hurt, gets a shot away on the King Tiger, however. And there's the squad right from the KV-2. Now up to... God, that climbed quickly. 31 kills now. King Tiger in peril. Needs to get out of there. Can the KV-2 get close enough? Its range is around here. Follow my cursor. So no, he's not going to get close enough. We do now have the penetrating veterancy of the Vet-2 SU-85, which really helps. Um, we've had a second shock troop squad. Hmm... Interesting, not too sure about that. Because the only reason I'm not sure is they're very manpower intensive, aren't they? But he does want to keep the victory points, doesn't he? But he's got 305 fuel. What about a Katusha? Wouldn't that have been cool? I don't know, maybe maybe we'll learn to respect opportunity cost building or building technical decisions, eh? STFUAE, basically, is what I'm trying to say at this point. He is going to be able to possibly get the Northern Victory Point. There are no mines there or anything. ISG, by the way, is from the for 12 kills. Now, a lot of health damage to get him there. He's only got one kill in the last 20 minutes, but a lot of health damage. And there's that KV-2. Oh, my. Look at that. 32 infantry kills now. We do have... Uh, there it is. PPSH is blaring. Couldn't get a killing blow. Oh, they can just on the edge of the map of the effective range it would seem Op orange pest has lost some pretty important squads recently the jlis died of course their writhing bodies are just there well, that could have been a folks trend either way he lost them and then of course we just watched another squad die oh dear oh dear oh dear shot troops have taken the northern victory points and they're holding for now so uh, full on we're foolish for doubting that then. But again, he does have 340 fuel, so not so sure you could say it's completely foolish. ISG continuing to fire as the shock troops now capping the fuel point themselves. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> like, analyze this for me, guys. <laughs> analyze it. Look at the fuel counts. Uh, it's one of those things, though, isn't it? It's so ingrained into all of us to continuously cap fuel points. But this is like... I don't think, what better, could, better thing could they be doing? Could they be pressurising that, perhaps? I don't know. But um, 13 victory points are opportunity cost lies on. we got a Jagdpanzer coming out for Orange Pest. King Tiger, of course, Veteran C2. What does he need to do to win this game? He has 218 vi 18 victory points. I mean, he's going to have to build some in more infantry at some point, you'd hope. Two folks ready probably won't cut it. Easy dodge there. Shock troops are in peril. And forced away. They're going to cap the northern victory point, stop the bleed. But how's he going to cap another? Maybe some mad bastard flank around this angle, but there's a mine waiting for him. Two mines! Ah! Opportunity cost had it covered. I was going to suggest a flank around there, but that wouldn't work. King Tiger coming from the northern direction this time. Ah, oh, <laughs> gets instant reward there. But the SU-85 was waiting as well. No pen, though. Didn't get a good roll. Jagdpanzer in peril. Back away. 105mm hour. So Barrage will do the same to that Zisk gun. King Tiger goes in against the SU-85. Stone Pioneers are going to pair in the heat of combat, perhaps. No. KV-2 waits. Oh, and Conscripts eat some big artillery rounds there. Can the King Tiger finish the job? It tracks and it kills. Meanwhile, SU-85's low health. Possibly a little foolish to 
send him so far in. Sandbag destroyed. Stone Pioneer is exposed. Shock troops go in. Throwing a smoke grenade. He wants to keep these victory points. But maybe the Veteran C3 Mega Machine Gun ISG could finish them off. Never know. Tell you, one shell between those three models. Oh, nice work by the Koenig Seeger. Just when opportunity cost expected at least, he ambles forward and gets a big haymaker in. Like an early 90s George Foreman. He may not look fast, but damn is he effective. Five is no longer there to cover for the KV2, thus decreasing his effectiveness. And the French Grenadiers may be able to cap now. This is a big moment. Can the conscript stop them? But not with the King Tiger watching on. Oh, the KV2 could finish the job. There, it executed, headshotted. One second away from winning the game. KV2 wombo combo with the Mosin Nagant rifle, big and little, to the rescue for opportunity cost. However, this. Glorious Rakettenwerfer could finish off the MVP unit, but misses by a whisker. What a game we're watching. That told you this could heat up. It was a little bit of a sleepy start, but it's truly awoken now. Oh, and the hero, Koenigstiger, could die to the Ziskun. He's really... Oh, he couldn't get the shot away. Anything could have finished the job there. What do we have? From Orange Best, we have... New Stern Pioneers, he's locked. There was something. Things have died in the south whilst this was going on, by the way. Um, Stern Pioneers are going to come into the mid. Oh, what's that Jagdpanzer doing? That's a Vet 3 Ziska. He should survive, to be honest. He should have mechanized somewhere, I presume, with the Automatronic Engineers. And there he is. He's going to be able to cap, perhaps. See this here? That could be the end of the game for him because he used all those combat engineers. They could have been like, hold. <gasps> no, he's gone north. He's staying in this one. His opportunity cost. There you go. He's gone north. And he's keeping it. These 13 victory points have been so hard to kill for Orange Pest. Grenade in. Oh, it's just an incendiary grenade. Davy 2's back. 47 kills in. And finally, we have a second. Panzer fall for Orange Pest only half an hour after the first one. What a good game this is! Very glad to have cast this. Another Panzer fall pushes in. Rakettenver forgets penetration. And Coach Grundy is now capped. And there's that KV2. They're glad they did that in the nick of time. Ziskun misses, as is the KV2, Rakettenwerfer returns fire. Look at this lonely squad in the north. He has to be careful, because one bad move could finish the job there. He went north with the Panzer IV maybe, and uh, plucky folks ready as well, he could finish this. Jagdpanzer pushes in against the KV2. I tell you, that was a good little push, but the, of course the Ziskun was waiting. Meanwhile, Vet 5, MG34 would do well to retreat. No! Balls of steel on that one surviving gunner as he gets very needed suppression off. Have they uncovered each other yet? There they go. Just waiting. Smoke goes in. And that's what I was thinking of. Maybe the Panzer IV could finish the job in combination with the... Uh, Lucky folks, Grenadier, but as you say, whilst that's going on, of course, Opportunity Cost is able to take the central victory point. Another smoke grenade, just trying to buy time is Opportunity Cost. He's paying for land with blood right now. <laughs> and uh, he definitely wants to keep that central victory point. King Tiger should be ready for combat again soon, shouldn't it? Indeed it is. There we go. There's those shock troops. They're making... Oh! They paid the ultimate price for their bravery and their heroics as the Panzer IV comes out of the smoke and tracks the target and misses wildly. But he's got two machine guns firing. Three, actually. The Pintle Mount Gun of that third machine gun finishes the job. Let's shoot five. The fresh one is on the long run of Vector 2 again. 
trees again. This has been Sturm Pioneers are capping. There's two of those bad boys now. Conscripts are trying to stop the capping. It comes that KB2 to get a good poke in. Oh, he kills two of them. Just the remaining one cap. No, he does not. Maybe he pushes the MG in now. King Tiger is going to be a, a sponge, a true tank from the computer gaming sense and just soak up the damage and buy time for Orange Pest to cap the central victory point. Is that the tactic? Either way, he takes out the second SU-85. KV-2 watches on in horror as it all comes crushing down. And the Panzer IV has got a flank waiting, by the way. Could he come in for the, the death? No. Four. Opportunity cost to the clanging chimes of doom sound. Certainly close to being Christmas time either way. Opportunity cost could be out of this game very soon indeed. 12 victory points now ticking down thanks to the heroic soon to be dead Vet 5 MG. KV2 has been blocked in by the SU-85. Panzer IV's got a damaged engine, has to back away. And that... Tell you what, that MG surviving as long as it did could be what he needed here. Let's watch the capping time. Probably able to survive on maybe one. He'll neutralize on some. No, he'll have like two or three remaining. King Tiger in peril. Conscripts go forward with the 18 8 Can he get it off? No, he can't. Suppression in. SU 85 is tracking though. Does he go into the isosceles mode of doom? Doesn't need it. Gets an out of control critical as the King Tiger careers to its doom. Meanwhile, Panzer IV waits. And there you go, Jagdpanzer down also. One victory point, however, is all in it because these heroic Fos Grenadiers take it for Orange Pest. He paid the price with his the death of his MVP tank units all the while. This Fos Grenadier made it to the central capping circle and finished the job. What a game that was. Let's have a look at the stats that tell the tale of a grim battle indeed. A lot of deaths, a lot of heroics. Army values dive as we see a mighty crescendo. Oh, tell you what, for having a two or three weeks off casting, that was a oh, it's a doozy to come back into things. Fifty-seven kill, fifty-six infantry kills, one vehicle destroy for the king. Uh, the uh, KV two, the Clement Vera Shilov howitzer on tracks as the. Panzer IV, the second one, just about survived, hiding. But the heroics ended up being, of course, this beautiful Fosch Grenadier. Whilst the King Tiger was dying, all eyes were on him. He was able to keep the central victory point for that, that crucial second it took. And uh, finish the job. So yeah, GG, well played everybody. Um, of course, if you're still watching this, you probably follow my channel anyway. You know all about Master League Tournament 4. Uh, Scorched Earth, that's uh, coming in mid-January. Um, this is possibly even my last cast before Christmas now. I imagine it will be actually, so, uh, you know, have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I'll speak to you very short, very soon. And, uh, yeah, hopefully 2021 finds as well. Uh, 2020 was a great year for coming to Heroes Tournaments, of course, but uh, hopefully we're able to continue our... Uh, our kind of resurrection of our competitive scene in 2021 keep it an independent community-led effort and uh hopefully we have a fantastic gcs3 as well i've uh you know 30 guys with a barbecue and some beers next year that'll be interesting if we can all get vaccinated in time so uh yeah let's look forward to that anyway i'll repeat it again have a merry christmas and uh, thanks for watching goodbye